Welcome to Tipsy Tuesday. This is Deborah Chetwood with the Texas Photographer. And today we're in Lightroom, but we're going to pull in a new application called Nick Silver Pro, e or Silver EF Effects Pro. It's a mouthful, but what a great software it is. I'm going to work on this little guy right here. This is my five-year-old's precious little kitten named Mittens. And we're going to do a little silver pro and there's so many different ways to take this so utilizing this I'm going to go up to photo edit in silver effects pro 2 that's the version that I have and it's going to pull it up and from there You'll see that we have a preset categories. I have all selected. And, you know, it gives you a lot of different options to work with. High structure, smooth versus harsh. High key one. High key two. Low key. I'm going to work with high key. Now this is where, let's, um, set it up the way it normally is in here so you can see where I go and how I get there. I can take the brightness and bump it up even more utilizing the preset where I started. I can change the contrast. I can pull the structure up even more to get more details in certain areas. But it doesn't stop there. If you open it up, I can brighten just the highlights, which is already pretty bright. Are the midtones? I bring them down. I can brighten my shadows or darken them. There's even a dynamic brightness. I want to really send that one up. I can go down. And in contrast, I can amplify my whites my blacks. I can even bring in a soft contrast. And if we go into structure, I can intensify the highlighted areas, the midtones, the shadows. There's even a fine structure in here. And there's a tonality protection if I want to protect my shadows or highlights. But this is the part, selective adjustments, that I think is what truly makes Nick software rock. I can add control points. And when I do, you'll notice there is, well, if I click on it right, there is a circle that I can bring all the way down or bring it all the way back up. From there, I can utilize, and basically it eliminates the need for masks. I can go in and play with it in just that area, and when I'm happy with it, let me show you a little trick. There's fine structure. Also selective colorization, which I certainly don't advise. It's not something I would ever use. Well, let's make sure that's on zero. When I'm happy with it, I can then hold down my Alt key on my keyboard. I'm a PC user, so whatever that means in Mac world, and duplicate it. Move it over. Maybe change it up just a bit. I always like to click somewhere else to minimize this for when I come out, the points disappear. I'm going to keep going and show you some other useful things in Nick software because we're just. We're just touring this. Under color filters is another way to change the look of your software or your image. You can select the different ones. I'm going to go with the yellow. And down under details, I can make it even stronger and change the hue until I'm happy. what it gives me. 
There's also film types, green, you can change that up if you want it more gritty or soften it. Sensitivity, I can go into the channels and play with this even more and, and really customize it. And there's the levels and curves. If I want to bring it up or take it down. So lots, lots and lots of flexibility. I can go in and tone it if I so choose. I'm not going to, but I'm just showing you what's there. Silver hue, the balance. If I want a paper underneath to change that. Let's say if I want the paper and then to change this up on top, it gives me that flexibility. Other ones, if you're into the fidgets, you can certainly add those in here. Um, burn edges, if I wanted to burn it. There's even borders. Well, Nick is all about giving you the flexibility and letting you really customize it without having to go through all the hassles of Photoshop. And though I'm such a Photoshop girl, I've been using it for over 18 years. I love the power of it. It's also time consuming. And Nick takes a lot of that away from you. Plus, it is probably the absolute, in my opinion, best conversion of black and white I've ever seen in my life for digital. I'm also going to go back up before I say this. Add a few more control points and um, bump my contrast in a few areas. Holding down my Alt key, I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to try it up here. Just want to get a little more in the darker tones before it blows out in the end. When I'm happy, I will go in and save that. And that's it pretty quick to get there and um, doesn't mean you couldn't do it in Photoshop but it would take a lot of layers and a lot of masking. Nick provides all of this to you without having to utilize the layers and mask and that's why it's such a powerful powerful application. I hope you enjoyed this. This is Deborah Chatwood. Until next week I hope you have a wonderful week.